done to honor that, but at the same time, I feel something in my heart I need to share. I told you before Sunday school that I felt in a little jet lag kind of thing. I felt this ground, and I was back here giving my all, just dryly giving my all, and telling God, I wish I could feel, feel something. And, and I remember that an old adage that the pastor taught me once. Sometimes you gotta shout when you don't have a shout. Right. Well, I saw her to holler. Yes. And you know what happened when I put forth that effort? I felt God. Yes. Don't wait for God to motivate you to worship. He's already worthy of the worship. He's already worthy of the worship. He's already worthy of a shout. He's still God. On our worst day, he's still God. On our best day, he's still God. child was 12 
and her issue of 12. I think these stories go together. That's why the writer put them together. Anyway, which she was an issue of blood which 12 years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any, came behind him and touched the border of his garment. And immediately her issue of blood stanched. And Jesus said, who touched me? Man, if you ever get in that prayer life and you can get the attention of God, who touched me? When all denied, Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude throng thee and press thee and says thou who touched me? And Jesus said, Somebody touched me, for I perceive that virtue has gone out of me. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling, and falling down before him, she declared unto him before all the people, for what cause she had touched him, and how she was healed immediately. And he said unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace. While he yet spake, there cometh one from the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying to him, Thy daughter is dead. Trouble not the master. We always talk about how her miracle interrupted Jairus' miracle. I just did a finish the book, and it was a good study dealing by, it's called Misreading Scripture Through Western Eyes. I, referenced, I told you about it last week. And, and it's wonderful because Americans didn't write the Bible. And there's a completely different culture that did write the Bible. So we have a habit of reading things from our culture, for, for you. Americans are consumed by time. What time does it, did this happen? What time is it supposed to have happened? So here we are consumed that he took time away from Jairus to do this thing. But in their culture, they were not worried about time as much as timing. It didn't matter when it happened, as long as it happened when it was supposed to happen. And as I keep reading and I keep studying, I remember that verse in Ecclesiastes, for every purpose under the heaven, there's a reason. There's a time and a season for it. This is true. This is, I don't think it was by an accident. Jesus didn't go off script. He didn't take an unauthorized break from his schedule. But the timing was right for her to be healed. It's time to be healed. There was a time for his daughter in a moment. But timing says it's time to be healed. The time has come. Do you know how tired she had to be from losing blood for 12 years? How exhausted, how weak she must have felt, how much effort it must have taken to go through that crowd just to get to that hymn. I know we can relate. Somebody has come in here broken. We've, someone has come in here exhausted. What are you tired from? What are you weak from? Don't you know I'm preaching to you today? It's time to heal. The timing is now. The timing is right here. The healer is in the house. Hallelujah. He, he may have been on his way to somebody else, but we've got his attention. And it's time to heal. Oh, it's not time to put it off. It's not time to say next service. It's not time to say I'm not ready. But the master is waiting saying, who touched me? Oh, it's time. Another scripture that I, I feel we've been misreading is in Matthew 7. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considereth not the beam that is in thine own eye? Yes, he's dealing with Hippocratic church leaders. I know that. But there's more that he's dealing with than just their hypocrisy. There is still a principle here. Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the moat of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye? Thou hypocrite, first, first, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye. First, Heal yourself. And then thou shalt clearly see, or thou shalt see clearly to cast out the mote of thy brother's eyes. It's not just dealing with the hypocrisy. It's dealing with the order of healing. Before you can help somebody else, you've got to heal yourself. Don't come up and pretend to be.
be somebody big. In the meantime, you're really just a broken shambles. We don't need a fake prophet. We need somebody real that needs Jesus and can show us how to pray. That's why I'm transparent and honest with you with my shortcomings. I don't want you to think I'm somebody super. You're going to know just how dumb and ignorant I am and that God can put even a donkey up here. It's time to heal. Don't be embarrassed to come to it. You know, I, I grew up that way. The preacher would give a bad altar call in my mind. Whoever is dealing with, whoever God's dealing with, come to the altar. Who's ever consumed my sin, come to the altar. Who's ever needing this? And I was embarrassed to come under those pretenses. If he had just said, come to the altar, I would have went. But I didn't want to go and be labeled under his altar call. That's my stupidity. And it cost me years. I was willing to stay with my issue than I was to come to the Jesus because I didn't want to be late. I rebuke that in Jesus' name. It's time to be healed. When it comes to dealing with the moat in, in your eye versus the beam of someone else's, we need to understand that we all hurt differently. Don't complain just because my weaknesses are different than your weaknesses. Don't complain just because her insecurities are different than your insecurities. You can't say, well, I, I rebuke your anger, and yet you suffer from anxiety. You can't say, how dare you be cowardly, and yet you lie. We all have issues, but before you can be of assistance to your brother or your sister, you've got to come to an altar and heal. And when is the time of healing? It's time to heal. One of my favorite illustrations I used to have to do for connections. I've been a priest since youth connection lesson so many times. I would take a water balloon. I would fill it with water. And I'd put a piece of clear tape over it just to keep the rubber from expanding. And I would poke the balloon. My kids, Taylor, you remember this one? I would poke the balloon. And you could watch the balloon bleed out into the bowl. And I, and I hold the needle here and I say, now what killed the balloon? And if you weren't careful, you would say the needle. But it wasn't the needle that killed it. It was the wound that killed it. It was the wound that was not addressed. If I had stopped the bleeding, the balloon would have lived. See, it's not, it's not the gun that kills people. It's not even the bullet that, that, that does it. It's the wound that the bullet causes. You've got to be healed. I don't know what's hurt you today. I don't know the family member that stabbed you in the back. It's not that family member that's killing you. It's not that knife that's killing you. It's that open wound that you've got to heal. If you have a broken heart, you've got to heal that wound. Not the issues of the heart. Not the contributors of the broken heart. But you've got to give your heart to Jesus and let him heal you. You know what happens to a wound that's, that is not addressed? You either bleed out. And we see that on churches today. You come and sit on a pew and you bleed out. Little by little you worship less and less and less. Unless they don't even come, you bled out. Or it gets infected, and now you're coming bitter and angry and resentful. I don't know what your issue is today, but it is time to heal. Time to heal. When that woman came up, it was not a coincidence. Jesus knew where he was going. He knew how many steps he had to take. When he asked who touched me, it wasn't because he was confused. It was because he was calling her out for more than just a healing. He wanted to look her in the face and say, Child, thy faith has made thee whole. I dare you to talk to Jesus today. Oh, I dare you. Who's tired of being weak? Who's sick and tired of being sick and tired? Time 
time and place. Bow your heads, close your eyes. If you want to come and pray, come and pray. If you want to kneel where you're at, kneel where you're at. Find a place and pray.